Good morning, my darlings. Gosh, it is echoey in here. I don't think I've ever started a vlog out in the corridor before, but this part of the house in the mornings when it is a sunny morning is actually one of my favorite places in the whole house. One of my first memories on the first morning that we woke up in this house, and obviously we weren't in our master bedroom because we didn't have any bedroom furniture, so we were in, um, the what we now call the gold bedroom down here and both Charlie and I woke up super duper early the church at the bottom of our garden chimes for about 10 minutes at four o'clock in the morning which took some getting used to and any guests that we have in that room in the future well now we have a blind in there which muffles sound a little bit but let's just say we're gonna have to put our friends which are heavy sleepers in that room so I think Charlie and I just got up super early that first morning in this house and obviously just so so excited as well and we walked through that corridor there and the light luckily the, the days of our moving were days like today just sun pouring through the whole house and because this house is single glazed just the light that comes into this house is so beautiful Single glazing means it's quite cold, <laughs> but it's just absolutely beautiful. So I've actually just been perched up here doing a couple of emails just on my phone <laughs> and doing some Instagram stories. I might even get like a little floral um, footstool here because I just love being out here so much. And you can see into the garden when we get the pond done, it'll be a nice little viewpoint from the pond. But as you might be able to see, I am wearing pink. I'm wearing spring pastel colors the past few days. Well, the past few vlogs you'll have noticed I've mostly been wearing like gardening clothes, very practical black leggings, and that's just not really me. That has been locked down me, but it's just not really me. And I placed a couple of orders lately, a couple of which arrived yesterday, so I've undone them, and I'm just really happy to be in some spring clothing. Obviously, well, <laughs> actually this morning it was minus one when I woke up, so not quite ready to start wearing only spring clothing, but that's what layering is for. I could be wearing a thermal underneath this for all you know. I'm actually not because this cardigan is nice and toasty, but today, oh, aching arm. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I can actually talk to you without my arm aching severely. Um, so today I would love to go for a walk this morning to our local pick your own daffodil field. It's actually the same farmer and the same field that did the pick your own sunflowers last August and um, they have pick your own daffodils. Charlie actually bought some daffodils last week but they are just in their prime right now so I feel like in a couple of days they're gonna start to look a bit sad. So I'd like to go and pick some new ones to have in the house for the next couple of days and I might persuade Charlie to take some snaps down there as well because I've just been so uninspired for creating content on Instagram that I really haven't posted anything other than a couple of reels wearing pretty dresses lately. So that's the plan later on. But I would like to show you some of my new in fashion pieces before that. I just want to say as well, thank you because you're very um, patient with me, very tolerant with me and my changing obsessions. I'm sure half of you probably joined this YouTube channel because you enjoyed the fashion content, because pre-move to this house, my channel was 90% fashion content with the odd vlog and the odd beauty video thrown in. And then you adapted with me and you went through all the home content and I think a lot of you probably joined the journey during the house move, so you you know, you watched all the home content and now I'm just obsessed with gardening. So so the theme of what you're watching has changed once again. So thank you for being very patient with my changing obsessions. And I hope that you're enjoying just experiencing all these things with me, but I do want to get back to a little bit more fashion content. I'm just going to weave everything in together. So I hope that's okay. So today's outfit of the day, these are both new pieces. This cardigan, I'm just rather obsessed with. It's got these little pearly buttons. It feels very, very granny chic. And I never mean that in a bad way. I never think that granny styling is like a bad thing. I'm sure that many of you watching are grannies and I'm sure you're very, very stylish grannies. So it's not 
I don't know, it's just a term that I can just imagine chic grannies wearing cute little floral dresses and chunky like baby pink cardigans like this. So I'm a big fan of this and it's apparently 50% recycled material as well. It's always a little bonus. And then the dress, let me just bring this down for you a little bit. So it's this lovely, I'm not sure what the most flattering way of having it tucked is, but it's a lovely lightweight material. The dress is from H&M and I, I, I always love to keep an eye on their dresses because at this time of year, they always bring out the loveliest dresses. I have to say I've preferred the silhouettes in previous years when they've had um, the buttons going down the middle. This is more of a kind of tunic style and it definitely needed the belt to create a little bit of shape. So I have just added my own skinny Loewe belt. And I said this a lot last year, I'm a big fan of these H&M dresses because they're nice and affordable, they're very comfortable and easy to throw on, easy to layer with a nice chunky cardigan such as this one. And because they are just lovely affordable pieces, I feel very comfortable wearing them around the house. And like I said, I don't tend to get my clothing items dirty when I'm doing house chores or gardening. So I would quite happily do my gardening in this outfit, which I know a lot of people would be like, you are ridiculous doing that, but I'm not gonna get it dirty. If a tiny bit of soil gets on it, it's not the end of the world. It can just go in the washing machine. So yes, this is my outfit of the day. Hopefully we'll get some nice snaps um, wearing this down in the daffodil field, but I do have some other clothing bits to share with you this morning as well. Okay, so I wanted to chat to you about some of my favourite all-time jewellery pieces. As I have said 10 million times, for me an outfit is not complete without my favourite jewellery pieces. Some of the pieces I just never take off, like my hoop earrings, my chubby hoops. Sometimes I take them off to go to bed, sometimes I don't, but they're one of those things which I just automatically reach for in the mornings, pop them in, and I automatically feel just a million times more put together. Even if I'm just down in the garden having that little accessory on, I think I said the other day it's a sign that I was once a stylish person, but I have always been big on jewellery and one of the first brands that I really started to invest in was of course Missima and still to this day I have my first ever Missima piece, it's upstairs in my jewellery box, I'll go and pop it on in a second, my Lucy Williams horn necklace. Let me know in the comments below what was your, I know that so many of you are Missima fans as well, let me know down below what was your first um, piece from the collection. I bet the Lucy Williams collection was one that really got a lot of people into the brand and I think, well I know I'm not alone in that when you get that first piece and you wear it and wear it and wear it because it's such a special piece, really, it really just made every outfit, like I felt so cool with that piece, whether it was with a bikini or a white t-shirt or a chunky jumper, that piece just made me feel so cool when I wore it. Um, and boy oh boy have I worn that one piece in the shower, in the ocean, it was something that just, because with necklaces, like for example this one here, once I'm wearing them, especially for example on holiday, I just don't take them off. And that to me is such a, a testament as to the quality of these pieces. Is that the postman? It's a builder. I didn't think we were having any building things done today, but I will let Charlie deal with that. What was I saying? Ah oh, yes, my love for the Misma pieces. So with actually every single piece that I have in my collection, something that also just blows my mind with Misma is just how versatile the pieces are. Like I can wear everything as both an everyday piece and yet if I'm getting a little bit more glammed up for an evening event then I can maybe add a few extra pieces. They just work with literally everything in my wardrobe and there's a lot to be said for buying designer handbags, designer shoes. It's very rare that you'll find that designer item that actually goes with everything but there's just something about the Missima designs that just go with everything. Like I have never worn an outfit that my chubby hoops don't go with or that my coin necklace doesn't go with and everything as well, something that they have mastered very cleverly is being able to kind of pile them on. For example, I love some of their more kind of chunky chain designs and if I was wearing an outfit that was maybe a little bit more 
I think wintery. Sometimes I think with spring outfits you need to keep the chains a little bit lighter. I'm sure there are many outfits, some of which I might try and later that will prove me wrong. But you can certainly pair up. This is another of my favourites from them. It's a little bit kind of 70s-esque, I would say. Even something like this would pair really, really nicely with my coin necklace. And this, I have to say, is probably in my top three Missima pieces of all time, especially in the summer. So you'll be seeing me wearing this a lot. But then they've also got their more fine chain pieces, such as this one. And you can, of course, um, mix and match the pendants. So depending on what you fancy wearing that day, you could put a little globe on here. I personally love the padlock. And if I'm wearing a V-neck, it's nice to play around with different lengths of necklaces. Gorgeous. Oh, it's the window cleaner, <laughs> not a builder, oh my goodness. So I would say, if you are looking for some jewellery that's just going to stand the test of time, things that you can purchase, whoop, purchase now and still be confident that you'll be wearing in a couple of years time with fashion trends change obviously jewelry trends change as well i mentioned at the beginning of year, the year how hoops are going to be one of the big jewelry trends this year and yet the missima designs remain so timeless that even if it's not the trend of the season i feel like you can wear these all the time one thing that I love to mention when it comes to fashion pieces is cost per wear and if you haven't heard me rambling about that before that would basically be if a jacket is a thousand pounds and you wear it a hundred times that would be ten pound cost per wear so the more you invest in things you want to make sure that they are pieces that you wear regularly to really bring that cost per wear down and when you think about jewellery and especially the kind of timeless designs like Missima that you just wear and can wear with everything you could literally wear these earrings 365 days a year so if the earrings and if the earrings are say 100 pounds or actually a little bit less than that that's like is that 30 pence price per wear either way the price per wear is really low you're basically getting amazing value as opposed to spending the same amount of money on something which is a little bit more trend-led that you might only wear on a couple of occasions every year and now i can't do any more maths because my mind <laughs> Is exploding but you get my drift so I'm gonna leave my favorite Missima pieces linked down below um, and I'm going to be styling some of my other favorites with the bits and bobs I'm gonna try on with you now but before I get changed out of this outfit I think I'm gonna take a little stroll down to the daffodil field and see if we can get some fresh blooms. So I've been saving up my new in beauty products for the last week or so to share with you. We have some really lovely new in pieces. I, I had a massive post unboxing morning this morning before picking up my camera while I had my morning coffee. So I'll just whiz through a few of these lovely new launches with you. I actually tried this this morning. This is a new um, kind of like a cream matte mousse blush from NARS. I'm actually not very confident when it comes to creamy blushes. I'm such a, a powder blush kind of girl, but I think it's given a really lovely natural finish. I really, really like this colour. It's great for more of a spring pop of colour. And then, <laughs> of course, this one is the shade Orgasm. Uh, we've got Rush and also Darling. Damn it, I wish I'd tried Darling. That's such a, a me product name. Um, so, so far, first impressions are great with this. I really liked how that went on. I did apply it over my powder bronze, though, which probably wasn't the best thing to do, but I will try straight over the top of my cream foundation tomorrow. Some lovely new products from Neil's Yard Remedies. I can see Charlie's already pinched a couple of bits from this selection. They also sent a nighttime tea and the pillow spray, which we love. I can't say that I've... Um, tried these before this is the beauty sleep body lotion and shower oil i love their fragrances and especially at night when you just want something to chill you out before bed they are really really lovely so i look forward to giving those a go very much looking forward to trying this as well i feel like my hands need a bit of love at the moment um, with all the gardening they're quite i've got some like dry bits on them i've obviously accessorized with my favorite rings um but my hands need some love. So this is a, I think it's a new brand called Green Flash, a lot more environmentally friendly, like clean um, gel nail polish. They sent some lovely colors over and also their LED light. So I'm gonna give myself a little manicure later. 
This is a top-up of the Skinny Sis Sarah Chapman Overnight Facial, one of my favorite all-time and nighttime products. I said in a vlog the other day, I tend to get through evening products really quickly, and I know that's because Charlie always pinches my nighttime moisturizer as well, but very grateful for a top-up of that. Thank you very much, Sarah Chapman. Code 8 have launched some new brow pencils, and I used the shade Medium this morning. Really, really love that. It's basically... Here we go, a coal pencil on one end and then a spoolie on the other. And obviously if you keep this freshly sharpened, you can get really lovely fine hair-like strokes. Very handy to always have a spoolie on one end to brush them up. And I thought the color was very natural, so very happy with that. New eyebrow pencil from Code 8. New from Elemis is their Water Mint Cleansing Balm. I actually used that for the first time last night. And as predicted, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It smells heavenly. It's such a pampering way of removing your makeup. And I just love everything from the Pro Collagen range. And then I got a new hairbrush from Wetbrush, which is great because I pretty much exclusively use Wetbrush hairbrushes. They're just so great at detangling without damaging the hair. I keep one in the shower, I keep one in my dressing table, I keep one in the bathroom. Speaking of hair, a new launch from Redken, the Acidic Bonding Concentrate. So this is an ultra-repairing, protective range from Redken. They also sent a little Wi-Fi microscope and a Petri dish, so I presume we're meant to be looking really closely at our hair. I'm intrigued to see any potential damage, but my hair definitely needs this right now. They've even got a leave-in treatment, and all of these have got citric acid and a bonding care complex in them, which sounds fantastic, especially for coloured hair. City Smart Privage, this is a range that I absolutely love. This is a double action detox peel-off mask, amazing if you've had a day perhaps in the city. Um, for removing pollution and any environmental, environmentally unclean particles from your skin. That sounds like a really, really lovely face mask. I love a peel-off mask as well. Very satisfying, so I'll give that a go later. We have some new gift sets from Fresh. This is just the most beautiful packaging, and this little set contains the Soy Face Cleanser, Rose Toner, and Rose Face Mask. All of these are just absolute favourites of mine. I love the Rose range from Fresh. It smells heavenly, and this is one of the most beautiful toners to have ever existed. Shiseido, we have some new Radiance face masks. So I think there are two different types of mask. Wrinkle Spot Treatment Lift Define Radiance Face Mask. Ooh, interesting. I've heard a few people talking about the power of watercress lately. Known for its powerful reparative properties. I will report back. That sounds rather lovely. Um, and then last but not least, I have got some new skincare from Function of Beauty. I love their hair products, so I'm intrigued to try their skincare products. We've got a serum, a micellar gel cleanser, I've not tried that before, and a moisturiser. Just like with the hair care, I had to fill out a questionnaire giving lots of information about my skin. So this is quite specific to my particular skin's needs. Okay, we've got some press releases here, I've read those. And then just some wallpaper samples for an upcoming project, which I will be revealing to you very soon. from our daffodil snapping expedition, which was lovely. It's just so nice to get out in the fresh air and head down the country lanes. Got some snaps in the previous outfit. So now I thought I would share with you a few new things and these are all from the high street. So if you're looking to jazz up your wardrobe for spring without spending an absolute fortune on your clothing, then hopefully this might give you some inspo. I've just switched into my bigger chubby hoops because I feel like this outfit can definitely take it. It's got some really lovely detail. In fact, let me flip you around. I don't know if that's any better or not, but we've got some really lovely detail here. Here on the neckline, there's this like scalloped edge on um, the center where it buttons up and then the same on the sleeves, which I just think is so, so beautiful. And then I have paired the blouse with this pair of trousers, which for me, this is the perfect outfit if you are like easing back into more of a workwear wardrobe, um, but you don't want anything that's too structured or anything that's too uncomfortable. The trousers, I feel like they look smart, 
but at the same time they've got an elasticated waist and yet paired with this silky shirt I think it is a really really lovely combination. A blouse like this I think you can always get away with some nice necklaces again just to add your touch of personal style to the look so I've got the same necklaces on that I was wearing a second ago and then for zoom meetings I think this blouse is a great way of still being quite feminine and on trend but still very very smart and then if you are on zoom your jewellery you do want to make a little bit of a statement so that that's where I think the chubby hoop earrings in the larger size are just absolutely perfect. I've decided I'm gonna be filming a reel of these different outfits as well. I just need to try and get a little bit more content on my Instagram. But this next outfit I really, really like. Excuse the piles of bits that I'm trying on all around me. So this top is a super duper affordable one. This was from H&M. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was under 20 pounds, but it's one of those tops that I just feel like goes with so many things. When it gets a bit warm, it'll be a really nice kind of crop top to wear with lovely skirts. My beautiful pleated Zimmerman skirt, I feel like this could go really nicely with. At the moment, it definitely requires a cardigan over the shoulders. I love the neutral colors of this one. It's got like this almost like plaited detail cable knit within the pattern, which I absolutely love. And I've kept it on with the trousers. I feel a little bit like, a TikToker wearing a, wearing a crop top and some nice trousers. But this, honestly, for me, is such a simple and chic working from home outfit and a nice different way of styling the trousers. Accessory-wise, I've kept on the chubby hoops. Just realized how nicely the chubby hoops and the Lucy William horn necklace, this is the one I was talking about earlier, my first ever Missima piece, go together. They just go so nicely together and this yellow gold I love it. Um, I thought because this was a bit more of a cool outfit, it would work. It would work really nicely with the horn necklace and all the materials are just very comfortable. This top, I love the square neckline, um, but it is super elasticated material, so nice and comfy. Works really nicely with the trousers with the elasticated waistband. But then just with a cardigan, and this one has a really lovely bow tie. If it gets a little bit chilly, or if you just want a little bit of extra coverage. No pockets. Oh, no, no pockets. This almost feels a little bit more kind of dressing gowny, whereas where when you wear it open, it feels a little bit more kind of cool girl working from home. Big fan of the trousers. I think these will prove to be quite versatile. This next outfit, I probably should have got ahead of doing the Legally Blonde reel, but I love a pastel coloured blazer and short set, all blazer and tailored trouser set, but this set has come with, in fact I think they were separates, these gorgeous little, like a boucle, but sparkly, look at this material, boucle fabric. Oh my goodness, for the most adorable spring workwear outfit, or not even just workwear, like I would wear this to go and meet my friends for lunch, it's just so nice having having my legs out for once. I don't get my legs out very often. This I would wear over the top of little white dresses. This is a really nice spring jacket. I popped it on over the top of the top that I was wearing earlier. I just absolutely love this little combo. I feel like Freddie would love this combo as well. Hopefully they might bring this out in some additional colors, but I feel like these light pastels, these spring shades are exactly what we need for uplifting our mood at the moment. Here we have the next look and we are entering that time of year where I get very carried away with lots of spring dresses. I must apologise for its crinkledness because my steamer has just decided to give up on me so I need to order a new one. That's a real pain because it's a little bit crinkly down at the bottom. Goodness me, I need to fake down my legs, oh my goodness. I'm hoping that a new fake tan is going to be arriving any day because I'm meant to be trialling a new fake tan, which is very exciting. Can't wait to tell you about it. Um, but yes, so the dress is just this lovely kind of blue cornflower pattern, which I really, really like. It's a nice dress for transitioning um, from the colder months into the warmer months, transitioning our wardrobes into spring, because it's just one of those dresses that's really easy to wear. It is slightly elasticated around the waist. It's got this drawstring, which I've actually not done up too tightly, um, but you can most certainly pop your own belt on it. Not too short, very creased at the bottom at the moment, but I do love these ruffles. And then you've got elasticated detail um, on the sleeves. I've just got the same jewellery on as before. I think it's really nice to have a little pendant just showing on top of a dress. Um, and again, statement earrings. So yeah, this is definitely a winner for my wardrobe. 
Okay, and then the final outfit that I've tried on is actually not part of my affordable haul because this is a premium retailer. You may have spotted this already if you are very on it with the vlogs. This is my Tory Burch. I called it my Joseph robe. <laughs> just absolutely love it. It's one of those things that if you just feel like you need to add a little bit of drama to your outfit for the day, this is the drama. It's just one piece you can pop on and just feel fabulous. So I think it looks better how I'm wearing it today with like voluminous hair. I think I looked a little bit like a pea head when I tried it on before because I had my hair scraped back in a ponytail. Would look even better if I had a little bit of a tan. But yes, and I've popped it on with the right kind of footwear, just some little very old top shop, um, what would you call them? Just little sandals. Yeah, I just absolutely love this. I think this is going to be my go-to spring dress. And just case in point with the jewellery, I've pretty much kept the same jewellery or rotated a couple of pieces throughout all of these outfits and all the pieces just work so, so well together. Where this dress has a little bit of a 70s vibe, I think the chunky hoops look really, really beautiful with this outfit. I'm quite tempted to go and take a few more snaps actually, seeing as today is so glorious. And then I think we have rain for the next, well, on my phone it says rain for the next 10 days. We'll see what Charlie says. Okay, just got back home again. We did end up going out and getting a couple of photos. We actually got a little bit lost, so we ended up doing some roundy roundies around some of the lanes and we were clearly gone for far too long. But these doggies, I do worry about these too when life goes back to normal because they're so accustomed to us being here all the time. Even if we go out for 20 minutes, they get so, so stressed. But I quickly got changed out of the dress that I was in earlier and into my leggings. I think this top is just going to become an absolute favourite. It's one of those things that just pairs so nicely with everything. I can imagine wearing it with lovely flowy skirts in summer, those trousers I was wearing earlier. And now, just with leggings and a cardigan, of course accessorised with a nice chunky chain. And my smaller chubby hoops, because I now have a Zoom. It is with Biscuiteers, who've done a collaboration with Emma Bridgewater. And I think we're icing our own biscuit. So these are the bits and bobs that came in my Biscuiteers kit. We have got... Oh my gosh, I just had to check that I was on mute on the Zoom call because they all stopped talking as soon as I started vlogging, but I think it was a coincidence. So this is everything in my lovely at-home icing kit, and we are celebrating the new Emma Bridgewater collection, which looks like this. I have got this beautiful... Do you know what? I actually get so many questions about my Dachshund mugs and these are from Emma Bridgewater. So this is the brand that has collaborated with Biscuiteers for the workshop that I'm doing right now but I love this beautiful new design. Um, so it's got these little butterflies on it. I've got the kettle on now making myself a cup of tea for the class. We've got some cute little mugs and teapot shaped biscuits and all the icing are ready to go. lighting I don't even know if I want to show you <laughs> my biscuits because let's just say I won't be giving the girls and guys that work at Biscuiteers a run for their money anytime soon they do not have to worry about me stealing their job because I am quite frankly appalling at icing biscuits I'm sure they're gonna taste wonderful but yeah 
icing biscuits is not my forte. I will show you, but it's nothing to be proud of. I just have a newfound appreciation for Biscuiteers biscuits, and they are such a lovely thing to receive as a gift. Really good mother's fool. Has Mother's Day happened already? Any, any celebration, they're such a lovely gift. But oh my goodness, now when I see how intricate their designs are, I'm gonna have a newfound appreciation of the hard work that has gone into them because, well, look at this. So this and this is obviously how they were supposed to look with beautiful decoration. And this is how mine look. <laughs> I'm just not very good at like, the speed at which I control the icing coming out. So they just came out in massive blobs. Um, so I decided to keep it simple on a few of the designs just with pink polka dots. I mean, what's going on here? What is going on here? It's meant to be a tulip, but it looks like a really angry cactus. I don't know. But anyway, I'm sure that'll be lovely and tasty. So I'm gonna pop, the zoom is still going on. I'm gonna pop these on a plate. Charlie will laugh at me when he comes downstairs, but never mind. And I still have quite a bit of icing left over, so I think I might do some fun icing of whatever I can get my hands on tomorrow. Good morning, darlings. It is now the next day. Wasn't actually planning on making this a two day vlog, but I thought, did I actually really vlog that much yesterday? But then I always think this, and by this point I'm probably 40 minutes into my editing. But here we are, day two, wearing the same outfit because... <laughs> That's what was on the chair at the end of my bed. So, today is very miserable, it is grey, it is raining, but on the plus side, it means that all of that lovely fertilised soil that we put on the beds will be soaking in and nourishing our very clay-based soil. I'm just going to crack on with loads of like admin, lots of editing today because I definitely don't want to be going outside in this miserable weather but we've had some amazing deliveries this morning quite a few brands are doing some lovely things for mother's day so i have a mother's day floral arranging masterclass with galan later on today which i'm really looking forward to and we also received a lovely bundle of mother's day goodies from soak sunday so let me show you all these lovely pieces gosh my kitchen is just full of goodies so this amazing parcel arrived from Soak Sunday and there is an identical looking box also in the entrance area so I think they have also sent the exact same selection of goodies for my mum which is just so lovely. This towel is so gorgeously soft this is going to be so perfect in my powder room when that's done and then we have the most gorgeous selection of products here from their Rose Utopia range. So I didn't actually know they did candles. Rose and sea salt scented candle. That just sounds beyond heavenly. Charlie and I were finishing off watching Devils in bed last night and we were snuffling sea salt. Ooh, look at this. Um, green and black chocolate, which was rather gorgeous. Now that is a chic candle. That is absolutely beautiful, like a matte pink um oh that smells amazing oh my goodness i love it when the um wax is also quite colored i think that's just so beautiful i might light that in here now actually so this is rose sea salt and geranium i'm not sure what the sea salt actually does to the fragrance but i'm sure it's probably just like part of the range it probably does more in things like the body scrub but i always find that rose and geranium as scents go really really beautifully together and we've got this little mini pestle and mortar, a sleep balm, that's interesting, maybe you pop this on your pulse points, and then we have got a lovely body scrub, I actually have a Soak Sunday body scrub in the bath tub at the moment, and it's rather gorgeous, and we love these, these are their bath salts, 100% natural ingredients, as with the rest of the products from the brand, and there's something else I love from them, their bath and body oils, they just smell heavenly, I've got a few of those in my collection. Ooh, I've not tried their face masks before. Clay face mask with pink kaolin, kaolin? Clay, interesting. Looks like I'll be having another pamper later. Um, and what have we got here? Rose hip and hibiscus tea. Charlie just boiled the kettle, so I'll make myself a cup of that now. And then, wow, sir. so this is, I think this is from Grays and Fig. Um, they do the most lovely grazing boards. This is a, a vegan, by the looks of it, afternoon tea selection. Wowza, we have got so many different little cakes, macaroons, and they've even put some, are these called carnations? Carnation flowers and these little thistle flowers in there as well. Oh my gosh, pistachio macaroons are my favorite. Actually, pistachio and raspberry macaroons, they are my two favorites. So 
a very gorgeous delivery from Soak Sunday. Thank you very, very much. And then this incredible delivery from Galan. I always associate Galan with Mother's Day. They have in the past hosted the most incredible events at the Connaught Hotel. Um, we've done flower arranging with them before. We've done afternoon tea before. And I'm sure they would have loved to have done a gorgeous event had COVID not stuck its nose into the proceedings. So they have sent over um, this amazing selection of floral pieces and we'll be doing a flower arranging Zoom later. I know mum is really, really excited. I feel very lucky that Lala is living on the property so we can do things like this together for Mother's Day. Charlie and I were just discussing what we're going to cook on Sunday, whether we do a classic roast or um, something else that she would love. So as well as the flowers, which are going to look spectacular. Ooh. Do you know what I'd like to do? What? Pom fondant. Okay. Which is the dish from the Marco Pierre White. <laughs> you and Marco Pierre White. Pom fondant, which are... Do you want to say pom fondant again? Pom fondant. Um, they are little, so basically you you get, I think you have to get Charlotte potatoes and then they're quite small. No, you got to get Caroline potatoes. Hey, Dave potatoes. And then you, you shape them and then they go to, but that you literally cover a pan with butter. And cheese? And then they sit on the butter and they soak the butter up as they cook and they look unreal. Can we just say that Charlie told me 10 minutes ago, Josephine, you need to start eating more healthily. And in now the, he's starting to the, talk about potatoes covered in Friday, butter. Saturday and Sunday. Calories don't count. what you want. Monday to Friday lunch, eat healthily. And well, then everyone wins. I'm not letting these cakes go to waste, no. nor am I letting the goodies from the Connaught Patisserie. Oh, I've actually seen a few people on Instagram stories oh. popping into the Connaught. Apparently they're pop-up, because um, obviously in London, if you're serving takeaway, then it's fine. I've seen a few people popping to the Connaught Patisserie and getting takeaway coffees, and I've been very jealous. Um, one of the only things I'm jealous of <laughs> for us now that we're not living in London. So they have recreated a mini Connaught afternoon tea that we can enjoy here at home, including these gorgeous little cups. However, <laughs> you guessed it, I'm going to use these as little plant pots because we've got lots of lovely mugs that um, we can have our coffee in. So we have got some gorgeous little gardening scissors and all of these bits... My boys are kissing in the background. All of these bits they have sent two of, so one for me, one for Lilla. We have got one of my favourite fragrances of all time. This is Mongolan. And I would say this is the fragrance that when I wear it, I get the most compliments from Charlie. Charlie's always saying, oh, that's a lovely fragrance. It's quite um, autumn winter, though. But it really? Is, it's floral. It's oh, is that the one? It's, it's quite floral. Strong. Oh, is it? maybe it's maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Don't know. But whenever I wear oh. this, you always compliment it. Um, and then, unfortunately... One of these didn't survive the journey. It's over there. It's a little bit squashed, and I'm sure it'll taste wonderful all the same. And I haven't actually seen this one yet, so I don't know what the intact version... Oh, no! This one didn't survive the journey either. This well, is the problem living slightly further from London. Yes, I'm sure it was beautiful, and it won't impact the taste. Oh, it's actually, in a, it's actually in a better state than that one over there. Do you there. know what, though? The funny thing is, is there is, like, a movement of, like... Deconstructed. Maybe yeah. that's what it was always meant Maybe to look like. It's a like. deconstructed cupcake. Yeah. Well, it'll taste fabulous. What is it exactly? I haven't got a clue. Can't tell. <laughs> um, so it looks like we're doing the workshop with LV Floristry. Wow, this is cool. Yeah, you sounds good, logo? isn't it? How, how jazzy is that? Very jazzy. I love the colour of the box. Yeah, I love, I love all of that. So we've got the tips here. Oh my gosh, are there anemones in this? Oh no, I think this is slightly different. I'm obsessed with anemones at the moment. They're so beautiful. <laughs> Says you, telling me to order 50 well, look, dailies you know last I'm night. Is? I'm trying to wait for you to stop vlogging so I can Ooh! count all the knobs and <gasps> candles. You're not. Uh, I'm trying, to, trying to count them all so that we, I don't get it wrong. I right. Okay, I'll stop vlogging and you can count your knobs. Okay, so we have Lilla over here and we are, we've just started our Galan flower arranging workshop. It's really lovely. She's actually in her greenhouse giving us all the tips and instructions. We're a little bit behind, but look at all these beautiful blooms. This almost looks, is this a cherry blossom? I think, mm, no. What, apple blossom? No, no, it's not. I think it's like a quince, isn't it? We I'm use my sure. picture this up. I don't know. We've got some like roses. It could, it could be a cherry, it could be a Japanese. Ranunculus. 
We've got some incredible sweet peas. Lala and I are having a bit of a sweet pea off, racing each other, growing our sweet peas. Lala is currently winning, and this is giving us a lot of inspo. my beautiful finished bouquet in fact I've chosen a really bad angle to show it to you because I actually designed it I think with this kind of angle at the front we learned so many tips for flower arranging I like the idea of oh, it's just really not a very flattering image of this bouquet on camera but trust me in real life it actually looks really fabulous if I do say so myself we have got the most beautiful blooms in here including some sweet peas um this is a blossom from I think she said it was from Denmark or Belgium and it's just starting to come through I was really intrigued by this because there are no signs of blossom on the trees in our garden and then we've obviously got some roses um some jasmine which are some of the notes in the new sparkling blossom fragrance from galan which i just absolutely adore we've got some beautiful ranunculus in there as well um which haven't even fully opened yet so they're just going to be spectacular and then there was some daffodils in the set as well but i've actually popped those to the side um because they've not opened up at all yet so i thought i would leave them to bloom on their own so it's just rather fabulous i really like how um the blossoms just add so much volume to it if and when we do get a round table in the entrance hall it'll be so lovely to have big voluminous bouquets like this and i'll definitely try foraging some bits from the garden later on in the year i need to keep a lookout for some amazing vases i was thinking i might even get some are they called amber jars or ginger jars um for the table in the entrance hall where we managed to find the right one obviously antique shops are closed right now so that's not making things easier look where dexy is what are you doing under there my sweet boy you're silly you're silly i love you I've also just been looking at um, Victorian cast iron cloches for my raised beds. I'll pop a picture of them on the screen now um, because I think I'm probably going to need some for some of my little seedlings. Actually, let me give you an update on my seedlings. They are actually doing really, really well, especially the broad beans. They are really starting to flourish. I think um, it seems that they really like this long root trainer, and this is the one that was made from recycled plastic. Oh, um, and I did my nails earlier as well. I don't know why I didn't vlog it, but I used that, um, the new company that I unboxed with you earlier on, Green Flash, and it was really, really easy. So I'll let you know how well um, they last. Obviously it is gel nail varnish, so hopefully it'll last a little bit longer even though I might be doing some gardening because I do find that nail varnish, normal nail varnish doesn't last too long when I'm gardening but I'm quite happy with that colour. So back to my little seeds, the sweet peas, the white swan sweet, pea, sweet peas are doing pretty well. Some of the broad beans are doing okay but some of them, okay that's not a broad bean that's a, a, a pea, um, but these have got like secondary and tertiary, is that what you call it? Third, third leaves? Broad beans looking amazing. This one I'm actually going to repot in the morning because it's starting to actually come out the bottom, which is crazy. Um, some of my white swan sweet, pea sweet peas here are looking nice and tall. This is how mum's looked about four days ago and hers are now looking amazing. Um, and then some of them just aren't showing any signs of life whatsoever. Well, interestingly, both of my white swan sweet peas are growing, um, but the ones that I think were in the pink packet, these are the pink ones, are not growing at all. So it really does depend on the variety, which is really interesting. Let's see. This is my Rebecca, just starting to show a few signs of life. My leeks I put in water are starting to grow. The mac and cheese um, wisteria is not showing any signs of life at all, who knows? And that's been nearly three weeks now, but we'll see. I'm not giving up hope on the mac and cheese wisteria, 
no basil coming through yet um and it's funny so these were identical broad beans and uh, neither of them were soaked in water but one of them as you can see is majorly sprouting and one of them in fact do you know what let's have a little look it looks like it is sprouting but it's not really doing anything that exciting in fact is it is it sprouting yeah it is a tiny bit but not really doing anything compared to its brother. Oh, and my parsnip has started to show a few signs of life as well. This is my parsnip here, this is my rocket, um, thyme, nothing happening in the lemon balm, and my Brussels sprouts are looking wonderful. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to split these. If anyone knows, please let me know. They obviously got really leggy looking for the sun, but hopefully they will recover. And again, if anyone's watching and knows anything about hardening off, do you think I should take these into the greenhouse? Because obviously these ones are like the chosen ones that got to be in the warmth of the inside, whereas I do have broad beans and peas in the greenhouse that um, haven't had the warmth of being indoors. So I don't know if maybe I should swap them. Now that these have successfully germinated, should I swap them and bring the ones that are in the greenhouse inside to give them a kickstart? Who knows? But anyway, darlings, I thought I would actually end the vlog here because I want to start editing it and um, getting it uploaded. And I don't think we're going to do anything exciting this evening. I'm just going to... Oh, I've locked Dexter in, in the uh, pantry. We're going to have some nice pasta this evening and you've seen me make pasta dinners about a million times. So I'm going to wrap things up and say thank you very much for watching. I will see you on Tuesday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye.